we're starting our webinar on the Open Education Week, Learning Toys for Free, Collaborative Educational Tools using Makey Makey and Scratch. If they are like a buzzwords that you don't understand, this is one of the objectives we are talking, we're going to talk about what is Makey Makey and what is Scratch, but most importantly, how we can use them to make our education better and fun, more fun. So this is what we want to show you today. Uh, if you're joining us, you can always uh, connect with us with Twitter account and with Facebook. Uh, we have our Facebook and Twitter. We will uh, follow up your questions on the YouTube page and on the uh, Twitter account. Uh, feel free to send us your questions, your comments, your ideas. We need your ideas. Now, who am I? I'm Sami Al Abdrabbo. I'm going to be your host from Oregon State in USA. But let's go to the other part uh, from the globe. We'll go to Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. We have uh, Ali Al Bahrani from Kuwait. Hi, Ali. Uh, he's going to show us the prototype design for the genetic uh, the game. And we have Anas Aziz also. Hi, Anas. Uh, Anas from Saudi Arabia joining us from Christy Science. Also, he will uh, present his own, uh, his own game or his own uh, um, uh, design for uh, the genetics. Before that, before further ado, let me connect with Jay Silver. Uh, give me one second and we will connect with Jay Silver just to uh, have some discussion with him. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, I will try this uh, on the speaker. Hopefully, it will work. And who's Jay Silver? Jay Silver is uh, Jay Silver is the inventor or co-inventor of Makey Makey, and uh, he's going to talk with us about his ideas about uh, the designs. Hi, Silver. Uh, hi, Jay. How are you? Hey, great. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great day. Absolutely. I just want to make sure with our audience, uh, give us a thumbs up or a, so a sound is clear if you can hear Jay. Perfect. So it looks like your sound is crystal clear, uh, Jay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for very much for joining us here. You're welcome. Um, thanks for having me. I, uh, I really care a lot about this topic. Thank you. So Jay uh, is one of the co-inventors of uh, Makey Makey. He kick-started it last uh, year. He's one of uh, MIT Media Lab uh, uh, graduate students, and uh, also he's really cool uh, maker. He had a couple of ideas. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, Aud 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 Audrio, and is it Aud Audrio, uh, Jay? Um, the Dradio. Dradio. So you had Dradio and Makey Makey. Could uh, could you ha give us a, a really brief description? What is Dradio and what is Makey Makey, and who should really use them? Um, well, okay. So I've made a lot of different creative platforms, which are things that you can invent with and hopefully as quickly as possible, uh, without having to learn things before you invent. Instead, you learn while you invent. That way, the learning is kind of built into what you're driven to do. Radio is a is a, um, at the shallowest level is a musical pencil. At the deepest level, the whole world is a musical instrument, and the pencil is just one of the things in the world that you can turn into a musical instrument. Nice. So it kind of has this stair step where first you see and try turning a pencil into a musical instrument, then you hook it up to a paintbrush and your kitchen sink and a, a tree and anything else. Um, and there's no computer involved, so all you do is just kind of uh, alligator clip or copper tape or thumbtack into just everyday objects, just uh, get started and going right away. And that was what led to Makey Makey, and it was the predecessor. Nice, nice. And uh, basically I'm having Makey Makey in front of the screen now. I'm uh, showing the box uh, uh, to the audience. And the really coolest thing, whenever you open the box, uh, it will say, be stocked. The word is your construction kits. Is it really? <laughs> um, the thing about um, the world being a construction kit 
is that it really already is. And, and of course, I mean, it, it's obvious to any artist or any crafter that the only real construction kit is the world you live in. And, and that's not going to be any big surprise. The big surprise is that you could buy something in a box, and when you open the box, that thing that's inside the box isn't calling attention to itself and saying, look at me. Instead, what it's saying is, look at the world you live in. The world you live in is amazing. And it's by design um, made to have people look around at the things around them and think, how can I hook these things together instead of looking inside the box? As, as wonderful and beautiful as Lego is, and it's an inspiration for me, it wants to attach to itself. Nice. Makey Makey, kind of like scotch tape or something, wants to connect things that you already have in your life together. Yeah. Nice, very nice. I'm having in front of me an orange, uh, uh, which we use in Oregon State. Uh, or this is the small orange. I don't know what they call it. And the Mickey Mickey. Basically, uh, we really had fun uh, building uh, some musical instruments uh, uh, using oranges and bananas. Uh, but does it really stop there? Uh, is it just for fun, or can we have it to the uh, other level, uh, to a different level than just only using it as a uh, fun tool uh, to attach uh, the electronics or the PC to uh, real life objects. I have a couple of different customers. I mean, millions of customers, but like kind of one on one end of the spectrum. I think the same person who buys Makey Makey would also buy a whoopee cushion because they just want to have some fun. And on the other end of the spectrum, it's somebody who would uh, instead buy you know high end technology equipment because they're designing for a corporate clientele or they're an expert artist uh, who is trying to realize a beautiful interactive exhibition. Um, and so what happens is you open it, you make the, uh, the most likely thing that you make first is, you know, probably some kind of a fruit piano um, or, you know, a Play-Doh game controller. And although those things are just kind of having fun, even by doing just that, you're already connecting your body as part of a circuit, the world you live in as part of a circuit, and you're repurposing some either computer program or something off the internet to interact with an everyday object. So already, I think it's pretty serious, even though it sounds like fun. Um, from there, not all customers will go beyond that point, but I think the true learner and the true educator and the true seeker uh, will very often go beyond that point to say, okay, what online do I want to hook up to what in the physical world? And we'll start to mess around with that. Even asking that question, what do I want to hook up online to something in the physical world, is a pretty big barrier that without Makey Makey, it would be hard to get people to just start asking that because it's, it's too hard to do. So this is really just knocking that barrier down and saying, it doesn't matter who you are, you can be thinking about this kind of stuff. Nice, very nice, very nice, uh, Jay. Uh, uh, honestly, this has been very awesome. We tried it in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I've been uh, demonstrating it for a couple of uh, uh, kids here in uh, Corvallis in Oregon. And uh, honestly, whoever uses it, they say we want a one. We want one just to play with it, just to learn with it. Uh, what we, we found in Crispy Science that uh, there is really a good potential with it. Uh, we're thinking of uh, the idea of whether to uh, play with uh, Makey Makey and develop educational kits uh, on a proprietary uh, basis where I would develop a, t a toy or a game and uh, we will try to patent it and then keep it to ourselves versus really open it uh, to the public, sharing it with everyone. Uh, maybe you had some experience uh, with uh, this concept uh, from your own education. Uh, having uh, the Scratch uh, platform uh, based on the remixing and sharing. Uh, do you think that uh, there is a good potential in opening, uh, having the open uh, concept there? Scratch is released, uh, the, the source code for Scratch is released. Draudio and Makey Makey are officially open hardware, uh, which means they they need a set of criteria that allows other people to build off them. And, and really, when you're buying Draudio or, or Makey Makey or when you're downloading Scratch, you're getting more than just the program or the piece of hardware. You're getting a user's manual and uh, details of how all the guts work with the idea that you should own what you should 
should own and be able to change the the world, and and that includes the things that we offer you. And so this open source thing, I think it's first of all, it's a mentality more than a, say a business choice. It's a it's a choice for education, for understanding, for it's a lifestyle choice, and that's that's where it started for me. Secondarily, it comes in um, from a business point of view that people want to contribute to your project if it's open. Yeah. And um, and from a project point of view, project proliferation point of view, if you want people to take something and run with it, well, you better give it to them. Or else they can't take it as their own. Absolutely. So um, I I offer you know my creations to the world so that they can take them and run with them. I don't want people out there doing what I want them to do. I want them doing what they want to do. Nice. That's the whole idea behind making Nature. So it almost has to be open source. Um, now, that said, there's some pretty dangerous and large companies, toy companies and businesses out there that if you do release something open source, they have more you know, more advantage over you. And so there's, it's not a clear cut thing and there's no easy decisions in life. I think we live in a new and changing world where you have to look at copyright, trademark and patents and you have to make the right choice for you at that time. Yeah. And open source is becoming more of the right choice for more people. And that's yeah. exciting that it exists at all. I'm really excited. Yeah. Interesting. That's very interesting, Jay. I really would like to thank you, and uh, we really appreciate your input here. And uh, uh, honestly, uh, wh whoever we uh, get in touch with and we show them this Makey Makey, it's a product uh, to be proud of. So again, thank you very much, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you very much, yes. Um, thanks for listening to me, guys. Uh, hope to meet you all in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. That was Jay Silver. Thank you. and. Uh, that was really awesome. That was really awesome. So uh, as you saw, uh, there there was like a couple of things that Jay uh, talked about. We uh, saw the uh, Makey Makey, which is a product, uh, a small piece of Arduino kit, if uh, you know the Arduino uh, uh, circuit. It's an open hardware. Uh, you can buy it and you start uh, attaching it to the USB and uh, then you can uh, play with it uh, Simply just Google Mickey Mickey uh, or uh, go to YouTube. You'll find really cool stuff where you can have uh, different uh, musical stuff. We're not going to uh, stop there. We're going to show you how we used Mickey Mickey and Scratch as a platform to really develop not only one game. Within the last two weeks, we successfully provided two games, two educational games. We're going to show you. Uh, first of all, uh, one about the triangle of fire. So basically, what is the elements of fire? I still remember the experiential learning that I got in the kindergarten. They give us a fire patch, and then we roll, and uh, the fire patch will go out. Uh, it's like a, a fire, and we can, uh, we can tell how we can protect ourselves from the fire. Uh, basically, that is a really cool thing if you can experience it. What we did in one of the schools, we showed the kids uh, how they can really play uh, with uh, uh, some Makey Makey attachable uh, game. And they can tell uh, oh, the elements of fire, which is oxygen, fuel, and uh, what's that one? Spark. You need a spark. So, without uh, any further I would like to welcome Anna. And uh, uh, Anas uh, is uh, is uh, one of our team members in Saudi Arabia. Hi, Anas. How are you? Hi, 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 Sammy. How are you? Hello, everyone, all over, whoever is watching. Uh, welcome to my table. Uh, over here, I'm going to explain to you, as Sammy just said, I'm going to explain to you the fire triangle. Uh, if you can see here, if it's clear to you, what I have is one of the elements, which is oxygen, and the next one over here is fuel, and the third one over here is the heat, or the spark. And uh, I borrowed my niece's Barbie house, and that's going to be the house that we're going to burn, <laughs> actually, using Makey Makey. Um, as Sammy said, this is the Makey Makey, and it's connected, each one of it is connected to the, uh, to the three elements. And if you can see the screen on the other side that has the um, scratch uh, representation, when I connect all three of them, when I connect the heat, the spark, and the oxygen, the house goes on fire. When I remove my hands from the heat, it continues burning because, as, as you know, 
for uh, for a fire you need oxygen and fuel to continue but this is the this is the simple concept of how we used models and scratch to demonstrate how a fire can be made nice nice very nice so basically if i touch uh, the elements i could uh, see what's happening this is a really yes. nice concept i i would like to show uh, the audience uh, through uh, uh, some pictures you uh, you've been doing uh, in one of the schools, I believe. That's correct. Yes, yes, we did. Uh, we did this experiment in a few schools. Nice. Uh, I will share my screen uh, in a minute, uh, just to show uh, uh, the pictures. So, what kind of uh, education level? Uh, was it elementary school? What's, what was it their ages? Because we have different audiences and grades might differ. Could you estimate the age uh, of, uh, you played uh, this game with the kids? We the age group that we uh, dealt with was basically kids from the uh, classes of fourth to sixth grade. And um, some of them actually understood the concept from uh, from the beginning, and some of them we had to explain it to them. But in the end, as they saw the demonstration, they realized that uh, how how the fire can be made. But the most exciting thing for them was the makey makey itself. For them, the most uh, everyone was like asking about makey makey. How can they use it? And how is for them it was something amazing to just look at. And uh, even though the demonstration is is quite is quite simple, it's uh, in the end, it's very exciting for uh, for me personally. I'm, I'm not even in the fifth grade, and I liked it. So yeah, it's it's a very good experiment. Very nice, very nice. So uh, Anas, uh, basically, uh, I I I think there was a couple of uh, students with helmets. Uh, we're going to see them uh, in a minute. Uh, what they were doing in the experiment? Yeah, we uh, we tried to make it a fun exercise. So basically, we made like human chains, and each chain was controlling one of the elements of the to start the fire. And um, what we had is we had a few students who were the firefighters, and their job was to break the fire. In order to break the fire, as we said, we have to either uh, cut the fuel or cut the oxygen. And uh, we made it fun for the kids, and that that was the part where they really enjoyed. And we had a few kids, uh, you know, randomly chosen uh, to be the firefighters, and the rest of the class was uh, making the human chain. Nice, very nice. Well, thank you very much, Anas. Uh, this is really great, and uh, I really liked it. You're welcome. Um, the, we will go now uh, to another thing. So basically, this is one of the uh, designs we did. Uh, we had one of the international schools back in Saudi Arabia. They asked us to really uh, make informal learning uh, education-related activities, and that was uh, uh, something that is really important because the, the efficiency of learning uh, and performance of your education uh, could happen from informal learning much, much higher than the formal learning. So basically we designed the games and usually we design some interactive games from uh, material you can find from your everyday life. Uh, but with the Makey Makey, the interface with the computer, the interactivity was much uh, uh, more fluid. Um, I will go now to our questions if we have any questions. Uh, we just remind me, remind you, uh, give us your questions on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, we will have uh, uh, we will have uh, your questions uh, answered or any comments. We want to see your ideas as well. Um, more, uh, you can uh, tweet us on Crispy Science or even on Facebook on Crispy Science. Uh, let me see if there is any questions there uh, yet. Uh, basically, this was uh, the first game. So just we are now envisioning this as an open, open platform. If I can really share the design that uh, Anas made, can we uh, share it with everyone? Maybe I can share it in the small town. That I share the hardware in the small town where I live. But if I want to extend it where I can use it here in the States, uh, someone else can use it in China or in Africa, the idea is to have a really a good respiratory uh, where people could share their designs uh, they can save them in the cloud somewhere in the internet. We download them, we build them ourselves. But here is the most important thing that is related to our theme today, the Open Education Week. How can we make the collaborative more develop uh, or the development uh, more collaborative? Can we make uh, the design of NS much better? That's something we want you to add on on it. And if you will add on it, we will not keep it for ourselves. We will share it with, back with you, with everyone. Uh, 
And that's the idea. If we can develop the design that Anas did, uh, and uh, we can make it uh, much more uh, interactive, much fun, uh, more tailored for uh, lower grades or more tailored for higher grades with more complexity, that's where we will find uh, the capabilities that could, we could see. Um, so let's see if we have any questions on uh, uh, the Twitter account. Still downloading. Uh, I think there is some comments about uh, the echo. Uh, uh, hopefully, we solved it now. If uh, you can give us uh, your comments, uh, if there is any echo, uh, let us know with a thumbs up uh, or uh, if the echo was uh, is not there anymore. Okay, nice. So. What do we have on the agenda now? We do have something about Mendelian inheritance. Basically, Mende uh, Mendelian inheritance theory, it's something in biology. Uh, I thought it's kind of cool, but I really didn't like it because it was in the book, not outside the book. Uh, one of our trainees, uh, her name is Zainab in Saudi Arabia, uh, she was uh, on training to develop uh, some new products, and she had this idea. Why not we teach kids about uh, about genetics and inheritance, how we can make genetics uh, more approachable for kids. And that's where Anas will show us uh, the design. Uh, Anas, if you could uh, zoom in with the design of uh, uh, the inheritance game, uh, we will have uh, the first prototype that Zainab developed. It wasn't interactive at all. Um, one one thing uh, we started with uh, this initial uh, design was to use it uh, just to uh, make the game interactive. We have uh, two, uh, two rats, I believe. Uh, we have the brown rat, which is uh, the uh, recessive, and the black rat, which is the dominant. And basically, depending on their genetics uh, uh, inside them, we will uh, to ask the kids, uh, try to figure out the combination of the four probabilities or the four kids that they will have whether it will be all blacks or black, black, brown, uh, black, or something like that. This is what we have now here. It's really nice and cool. Uh, I think you can uh, attach it and deattach it and play with it as uh, a small box game. That was really nice. And to really represent uh, the uh, small uh, uh, genes and the big genes, uh, we had the design uh, that shows uh, the, the big coin for the dominant and the small coin for the recessive. Uh, and basically, we show them through that that each uh, mice uh, could ha would have two uh, types of genes, uh, and uh, these genes could be all dominant or dominant and recessive. If you don't know biology, that might not look very fun for you from what I'm saying now. So let's show it to you. Uh, after that, let me show you uh, like a, what we hope as a flagship. Before showing uh, the design, Anas, let me show them uh, some pictures. Before we even looked into building something, we went through, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, so I like engineering design. We go on the paper. Uh, we, we will share with you on the screen. Um, let's see. Screen share. And uh, we will show you over the screen uh, some of the pictures uh, that we did. Uh, these designs were uh, ideas to make the makey makey attachable to the first initial idea. So basically, we had the map, and uh, uh, let's see if everyone is seeing it here. Nice. So this was uh, the f uh, design number two. Uh, it was uh, like a s two small, a small and uh, big disc, and we would have the small disc for the recessive, the big disc for the dominant, and uh, it was a good idea. So we t we uh, uh, communicated it to Ali, and he was uh, working on building it. We had another design. Uh, this is design number one, uh, which is uh, simply we have four coins, and we have uh, the ground. Whatever coins will be attached to uh, the ground. Uh, will uh, let us know uh, which design, uh, which uh, which genes are being communicated uh, to the second generation. The third design, I think it's cool because I built it. Uh, it's like a cone, 
and uh, this cone will have uh, the coin either uh, stay uh, at the bottom or at the top. Basically, uh, from that, uh, we can tell uh, the type of the coin that is inside, which represents the genes, one from the father, the other one from the mother, and uh, then the electric circuits of the Makey Makey will take care of uh, communicating this to the Scratch platform, uh, which uh, we built for the mice and uh, for uh, uh, and for the rats. So, without uh, further ado, uh, I would ask uh, Ali and uh, to tell us about his first design, uh, the discs. And uh, Anas, I believe you are in Saudi Arabia now. Uh, if you could uh, uh, show us uh, the design that Ali will talk about. Sure. Yeah, hello world. Um, uh, it's nice to talk with the, with the whole world now. I think it's uh, on YouTube, so it's my first appearance on YouTube. Uh, my, my design is simply for, to simplify the whole phenomenon about the genes, how we, what is the colors of the babies from the fathers and the mothers. So, Mendel says we have a dominant genes and recessive genes. So I represent um, the dominant sorry, genes. Stop you. Uh, Anna said uh, there is a, uh, an echo from there. Uh, you could uh, mute your speakers, uh, Anna. Uh, so, uh, or maybe mute the microphone, uh, and uh, you can stay with the speakers because you need to listen to him. I believe. The, yeah, sure. The microphone that would be uh, uh, that might solve the problem. Yeah, I think, I think this is better now. Nice. Go ahead, Ali. Okay. So we represent the dominant genes as a, a black ring, a big black ring. Uh, I, I simply I, um, demonstrate the dominancy with the shape. So the big one is the dominant one, as the kids see that. So, uh, and I represent the recessive uh, genes as the smaller one, the orange one, um, to be represented for that gene. So basically, uh, I'll give the choice for the kids to choose one, uh, genes from each one of the fathers and the mothers, because each uh, um, each parent got dominant and recessive. So if a, a kid uh, pick two dominants from the father's took the black one, and from the mother's took the black one, the black friend, so if we have two black rings which re represent the dominance genes, and he can put them uh, on the base, which is the whole um, operation goes there, and make you make you will uh, present this to the software and bring um, a black baby, a baby with with, um, with the color of black. And if we if if, if, if the kid took one recessive and one dominant. Nice. We'll have the dominancy for the color of black. So we'll have a black baby uh, coming out in the screen using scratch, of course. Nice. And, uh, and that goes same if he took two recessive and put them together. Actually, the base it is designed that uh, you can put only one gene for each side, for the father side and the for the mother side. And if you if you put a small ring, you cannot put uh, on top of it. A bigger ring, a bigger ring, and and vice versa. So that allows um, the the game. It wouldn't work until you pick one gene for each side, the mother side and the father side. Uh, I took in consideration putting uh, the colors and the shapes and the in the design, so that we will motivate the right brain and left brain the kids, because they they love to interact with with shapes and colors. So one one uh, recommendation we can use rather than the rings, we can use another uh, shapes like squares or triangles. Back to you, Sam. Very, very nice, very nice, uh, Ali. Uh, I, I really like this design. So basically, uh, uh, just to explain for uh, everyone here, uh, we started with the idea that why not uh, we build more than one design. Uh, for engineers, this is the way we do it. We try to, at least on the paper, we develop more than one alternative. But for educators, that's more important because every kid have uh, their own taste and every situation have the, uh, its own essence. Uh, so basically, if you want to have a show 
uh, I, I believe this is really nice uh, to make your show. Uh, but let's say uh, if we want to make it uh, more intimate to the kids and we show them uh, some, uh, some uh, stuff that will relate to their uh, mental uh, model, maybe Anas uh, will show us something nice with the kangaroos. Uh, back to you, Anas. Uh, Welcome back, guys. It's me again. With the, uh, with the software as well. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Thumbs up if you can. Good, good. Uh, what I have here on my grass, if you can see my grass over here. Yeah. I have over here is a father kangaroo with the mustache. If you can see that. And I have the female kangaroo, the mother kangaroo, um, with the ribbon on the head. I guess there's no makeup, but you know. Uh, basically, what we have over here is they have two types of genes, each one of them. The big ring over here that you see is the dominant, and the small one that you see is the recessive. Similarly, for the male kangaroo, you have the same. You have the big ring, which represents the dominant, and the small ring that represents the recessive. Uh, if you can, if you can um, look at the screen with scratch, if I take a dominant, uh, and I take a dominant from the male and a dominant from the female, as expected, the baby that we will get is going to be brown in color. As you can see over here, when I take two of them and I put it in this basket, where the baby is going to be born. Nice. Let's see the screen. You, yes, you will. You will get. Uh, oh. You will get a brown kangaroo. Now, what happens if I take a dominant from the male and a recessive from the female? As Ellie explained, it should give us. It should give us a dominant baby again because the dominant gene over here is the brown gene. And if I were to take out the dominant from the male and instead connect both recessive genes, I will get a gray kangaroo. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. So that, that was basically the experiment. And uh, the, again, something that was really uh, enjoyable for the kids. They learned something new. And uh, biology, for example, is very boring. And uh, experiments like these bring to life concepts that are, you know, usually not, you know, not very easy to understand. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I want to add something that yeah, we we actually uh, applied this game on, on the uh, international school in Denmark, in Saudi Arabia, for the third graders, female third graders, and they uh, interact with it in a good way. Nice, nice. Um, I, I would really uh, want to see uh, this develop, uh, and uh, uh, I'm really happy that uh, we did uh, we did this with the schools. Uh, oh, let me let me uh, let me show you something else. So we had three designs. Uh, basically, uh, uh, we tried uh, before we uh, started the first webinar in Arabic uh, uh, last Monday. We did not see our uh, hardware, the design that we built. We had the ideas and we wanted to uh, develop uh, the hardware. Uh, so uh, I worked with uh, my colleague here, Fatima Musawi, and uh, uh, we had uh, this a small box and uh, let me show you the design of the cones. This is the cones design that we showed you before. Uh, we have uh, uh, here, let me take out the Twitter. Um, yeah, so here in this box, uh, we have small plastics at the top and another plastic at the bottom. If I will get uh, different coins and pennies, uh, let's say uh, a coin of the size of a quarter and a size of a penny, uh, then I will be able to uh, drop them. And when I drop them, I will drop one here from the father and the other one from the mother. And the circuit will tell. So basically, the circuit will tell with the makey-makey which one is it? Whoa, what's this? So basically this is a Mickey Mickey and some wires. We are wiring the ground uh, at the bottom and then we have at the top uh, the one signal for the dominant and the other signal for the recessive. Uh, basically this is really easy, uh, uh, easy thing to connect. If, even if you don't have any background in electric uh, circuits, you can build it with uh, some introduction. Just go to makeymakey.com uh, forward slash how to and you will find how you can uh, really build the small circuits. Basically, what we believe that is different with this, uh, whether it is my design or the other designs there, 
uh, or our design that we worked uh, uh, together is uh, we are trying to make it uh, for an educational reason. And uh, if I want to go to the school, I can give it to the teacher or maybe I present it to the kids and they can play with it with a scratch platform over the PC. Uh, they can know uh, how to program it, uh, how to develop it, and they can learn from it. Making it open is really critical. We believe making it this open will make it accessible for everyone, but also will make it more capable to develop. It will grow as our learning grow with us. So uh, maybe uh, this design is really convenient for you if you want to buy it. It's with the US, uh, USB. You can get your Make Me Key by your own, and you can build it by your own, or maybe you can buy it from so someone who really likes to build this stuff. Uh, if you like the other design that the guys uh, showed you, also you can build it by your own. So how you can get access to it, and this is really critical. Uh, that's uh, one question we will follow up after seeing your questions uh, at uh, Twitter and Facebook or YouTube, uh, if you're seeing the podcasting on live, uh, we will follow your questions. Uh, before that, uh, we will show you one page uh, of uh, uh, the Facebook page we developed, and this is what we did uh, uh, as of now. Um, we, uh, we developed, uh, the, we will uh, share the screen with you, and uh, we will show you how uh, we did uh, the documentation of what we did. Basically, we, uh, we wrote in Arabic, the objectives of the experiments, how you can do it, and uh, basically, um, let's see. Um, maybe the screen sharing is not working. Um, can we do, let me try to do it from here. Ah, here we go. So, basically we have uh, a documentation, a Facebook notes. Uh, if you go uh, and view the full notes, uh, we will have the description in Arabic. So, if you are a bilingual, uh, we really need your help. Uh, basically, here you can see the description of the game, uh, the scratch uh, links uh, of the game that you can uh, go to, and we will show it to you uh, in a second. And uh, uh, how you can operate this game, uh, and then the most important thing, the drawings of the game. So if you go down, uh, you can see the sketches that I did for this design. Uh, I did the sketch so a teacher can build it uh, if they want. Uh, they have the mapping of the circuit, so no experience required. Uh, but most importantly, it's open for everyone. If you have an idea, if you have design number four, go for it. If you have another idea, of teaching uh, how oranges uh, grow or maybe how nanotechnology works and you think we can develop an interactive game for it, go for it, share your idea. Maybe you don't have the time uh, or you can't do the effort to build it. Someone else do, but they need your idea. We need to collaborate, collaborate on this. Let me show you the softwares we developed on Scratch. So basically, we will have uh, uh, the scratch.mit.com.edu, uh, I'm sorry, scratch.mit.edu. Uh, we have these designs where uh, you can uh, see them and browse them from any browser. If you have an internet browser, you're ready to go. Uh, you can uh, play with it with your keyboard to test it and see how the uh, kids work, or maybe you can attach it to the uh, uh, makey makey gadgets and then it will work with the game. So uh, let's go to the next step, which is what challenges do we have and uh, why we believe this is important. Uh, first of all, we believe this is important because um, if I'm, I'm just envisioning this. You're going to your public library, and there is a 3D printer. Uh, there is all of this stuff that you can check out or buy from the local store nearby the library. You go to the library, and you ask for... Uh, item number uh, makey makey dash 551 and 551 is this design you take it out to your school and uh, you uh, you use it for your instruction as a teacher uh, someone else will check it out and will duplicate it and will sell it on Amazon uh, maybe we'll donate it to uh, some kids in Africa uh, someone else will go to uh, the online uh, website which is our Facebook now 
and will say, huh, I want to share this idea with uh, uh, my teams who wants to do engineering design in their school. Uh, we want to build something like that. We want to add ideas to them. So they can go to the online uh, documentation about this and they can share it. So uh, I'll go to your questions if you have any questions or any comments. Uh, we would like, we would love to see it. Uh, and then I will go to the challenge that we have. And the challenge that we have is, if you know how we can share it openly with everyone, the designs that we do, uh, the drawings that we do, uh, the ideas that we have, uh, we really, we don't know. Uh, we started this collaboration. Uh, we wanted to show you a small uh, collaborative effort uh, between uh, different individuals uh, uh, in Virginia Tech. My brother used to help uh, in some programming, and uh, I'm here trying to help uh, with the resources, with coordination, and uh, some teammates here uh, helped with the design as well. Some teammates in uh, Saudi Arabia, they helped with the design, with, with testing it in the schools. So basically, this is really what we want to see. Uh, we want to see people collaborating from everywhere where in the world and develop some functional design. Now, can that happen? Yes. We need a respiratory to store this data. We need people to have access to this. And this is where we want your guidance. We want you to show us how we can do that. And uh, uh, this, uh, this could be uh, through different means uh, and uh, from different individuals who can volunteer their times or maybe educators who think this is their profession. Uh, I want to mention something very interesting. Uh, this is the Open Education Week. And uh, at MIT uh, me, uh, Media Lab course, there's a Media Lab course that is open online for everyone to enter. Uh, and uh, I'm enrolled in it. And they just mentioned uh, this week we had the open learning uh, 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 seminar or lecture. Next week, we're having an assignment to go through Scratch. So just go to Scratch, that's, uh, that's MIT, that's EDU, try it. If you want to have uh, more uh, uh, vision of what's happening, how you can remix it, go to uh, the hashtag uh, Media Lab course. And there is uh, 10,000 students, or maybe more or less, uh, who is uh, enrolled in this uh, uh, course. It's really amazing course. It's it's very nice course. And uh, I, I guess uh, we, uh, they are going with the same direction, which is using a Scratch platform for remixing and for educational purposes and perhaps makey-makey. So stay tuned with that course. Uh, stay tuned with us at Crispy Science. and. Uh, uh, you can uh, really uh, get involved in this wherever you are. Uh, if you want to buy a Makey Makey, now it's available in Saudi Arabia. You can buy it by uh, uh, sending to uh, crispyscience.com. There is a form for that to buy it. Uh, if you want to buy it anywhere in the world, you can go to, to makeymakey.com. We will share all the links with you. Uh, don't worry if uh, I'm rushing uh, a lot with the links. We'll share all the links on the Hangout page and uh, on the YouTube page. Uh, get your makey makey and start changing the world. Let's start changing the education. Um, uh, without all further ado, um, I really want to see if there is any questions, any ideas that you want to share. So thank you very much. We appreciate everyone's uh, input. Uh, we want to uh, see uh, your comments. Uh, I want to uh, just to uh, end up with thanking everyone. Uh, thank you everyone for helping us, uh, especially those who were involved in the in this seminar. Uh, being open means that uh, uh, that credit should go to every single one who encouraged us. Uh, I would like to thank uh, behind the screen Fatima Musawi. Uh, Ali Bahrani from Kuwait, uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, Anas uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, Ala uh, Al Adrabbo, uh, we have uh, Saliha Al Ajmi, uh, Aqil Al Khamis, and uh, uh, who else? I, I hope I didn't forget anyone. Zainab Ramadan, uh, who is the design. 
دانيال محمود and Mahmoud Al Faqi, one of our science communicators. Uh, this was the uh, core team, but uh, I really saw a really huge uh, uh, advocacy and help from every one of you. I want to uh, thank uh, Jay Silver and uh, Eric uh, for their support uh, from the Makey Makey side. Uh, I want to thank you all uh, for your help. Uh, the Open Education Week is still going on. There are seminars and webinars about uh, lots of other initiatives. Uh, join us uh, on the Open Education Week. Thank you very much. See you around.